Welcome to r slash credit by Haunted TTS. Subscribe and like this video for more, and don't forget to click that bell button for notifications. What's the unsolved mystery in your local area? The lady was stabbed 27 times while locked in her apartment, the boyfriend was banging on her door for her to let her in while it was happening, she was heard screaming, there were no signs of forced entry or exit, no fingerprints on the knife, no traces of anyone else in the apartment, no nothing, the case was ruled as a suicide, but recently opened back up because they skipped over some details or something like that. The girl I went to school with went missing in the woods. Here's a crime watch daily special on it. Molly Miller was her name. I remember when I realized she went missing. I always thought she was really pretty in school, blue eyes and sleek black hair, and she said hi to me when I was new and just thought that was so sweet. I moved to Texas the next year and happened to see her face on the board at Walmart. I was like that looks like Molly then it was unfortunately. This was about 10 years ago and no one has heard from her and there is still no answers. There was a house fire in a plat South Dakota about an hour from my hometown. Okay, but the whole family died in it mom, dad, four children. At first they thought, what a tragedy, and then they assumed that the dad shot everyone, as there were bullet wounds in each person, set the house afire, then killed himself. Pew the news and a very good news anchor investigating the whole thing. She was getting deep into what happened and found out the dad and mom were embezzling money from an organization they were a part of to help Native American education. One million dollars embezzled. Then, the police dove into some scattered security camera footage, small rural town, and saw a vehicle drive to and from the property in the wee hours of the night. Hmm. Murder suicide or homicide. Said anchor was getting closer to solving the dang thing and rumor has it, she ended up getting death threats and stopped all coverage. This would only have to be true because she had a special on it often and there was just no closure on why they stopped looking into it. Not a peep about it since. There's a lot to this story and I summed it up the best I could. Maybe should try to find a crime junkies episode on it. We supposedly have an emu farm in our town. The problem is that nobody has seen it, but we keep finding emus in random places. My total spotting since 2013 is 11 emus. We know there has to be somebody with an emu farm because we knew this guy who knew this guy who knew this guy. Everyone we meet assures us there is a farm, maybe, I mean there has to be right. Our closest random residential emu is four houses down living amongst the cattle on a farm. The folks are kind enough to take care of it, mostly because it refuses to leave, and we don't know what to do with it. The emu has been proclaimed Edith. Back in the 1920s, in a small town in Appalachia, there was a woman who was found with her throat slit ear to ear, three gunshot wounds to the back of her head, and a single shot to her newly pregnant stomach. Her body was dumped on a basically deserted mountain and found after she was missing for a week. She was brought to the morgue, along with her purse full of her belongings. The next day, the medical examiner goes to perform an autopsy on her body, she was found late at night and finds that her body is missing. The only thing left was her hairbrush that looked as if the body thief had accidentally dropped it on the floor. Fast forward to 2010, a very old hotel in the town burns to the ground. As they demolish it and bust up old concrete, they find a body. They did some DNA testing and find out it was that woman whose body went missing all those years ago. It's believed that her husband killed her because everyone in that small town knew she was friendly with other men and had gotten pregnant by his business partner. Since her husband was fabulously wealthy, he paid everyone off and paid someone to hide her body. The disappearance of my three-year-old cousin back in the 80s. He would be 37 this year. The Delphi murders. Two young girls killed by some creep on a walking trail in Delphi, Indiana. They found a clip of video voice of perpetrator on one of the girls' phones, but no ID yet. The disappearance of Brian Schaefer. I can see the building from my apartment. 25 years ago, six teenage boys went missing in my hometown. They were all around 16 to 17 years old I believe. They went out drinking, went to the marina and apparently stole a boat. That boat and the six boys were never seen again. Never found. The families never heard from them again. Bodies, clothing, nothing ever surfaced. They just disappeared without a trace, all six of them. My dad's old house in high school was found, after construction, with like 50 plus bodies buried there by the Italian mafia. True. The young woman's body was found behind a local fire station off a main highway that runs to Myrtle Beach. She was supposed to be visiting her dad and did make it to MB from Florida, but never made it to see him. A scooter rental company denied her service because according to the employee, she was acting strange. Sheridan told her mother it was because she didn't have shoes. For reasons unknown, she headed back the way she came without seeing her father after she just drove 10 hours to visit him. 
Her dad eventually called the cops because she didn't show. Her car was found burned off of a desolate dirt road near my childhood home an hour outside of Myrtle, same as the fire station. Eyewitness said they saw a man running away from the burning car and getting into an sub with what was assumed to be a second perpetrator. The police say that her death resulted from falling off the training tower behind the station, but the entire case is so bizarre. I hope they find real answers for her family because there are so many factors not adding up. Why is this random car driving around the block over and over again in the middle of the night, like seriously I spent an hour last night just watching the car. I'm not even sure it's from here, a couple weeks ago I tried to find what house it came from, but came from outside the neighborhood. The car is green with no license plate and is a Ford. The driver appears to be different every night and it's freaking me out. Uh, this isn't a local area mystery it's just a, me, mystery but still. The West Mesa murders in Albuquerque, I don't know if it was a smart murder or just bad police work, but I would sleep better if someone was caught. In 2012 several fingers were found outside a neighbor's house. The only explanation is someone wanted to send a message. I have a couple more stories, but that one is the weirdest. Arlington, Texas, the Amber Hagerman abduction and murder. She's who the Amber Alert is named after. She was kidnapped by a wider Hispanic male with a black truck. Her body was found in a stream behind some apartments in North Arlington, and she was in the water long enough to wash away any forensic evidence. A quarter of a century later it's still unsolved. Lena Sartor kill a three-year-old Afghan girl went missing from her apartment complex while playing in the playground in December 2021 San Antonio, Texas. My hometown has Mark Heimbaugh. The kid went to watch a brush fire, was seen passing through a local park, and never made it home. Everyone and their mother went out looking for him assuming he was just lost, by the time they realized he had to have been kidnapped it was too late to find a trail or close the roads out of the area, it's a small town, there's only a few roads to leave the county. There's never been any trace of him found. Boy in the box. In northeast Philadelphia many decades ago, the boy's body was found abandoned in a box. They have not figured out who the boy is or who committed the crime. He's been given a burial place in a local cemetery with a headstone, just waiting for his real name. You can Google the exact details, try boy in the box Philadelphia. Serenity Dennard. Was at a youth behavioral facility in Rapid City, South Dakota, and just walked off. Search began an hour later, and she was nowhere to be found. Mind you, in steep hills and like 15 degrees weather with no coat on. Just gone. Full large searches of the area for two years. Nothing. She was nine at the time. From the town in which I attended university, back in the late 80s, the co-owner of a local nightclub which was known for catering to progressives, punks, and the LGBT plus crowd vanished without a trace. The most persistent rumor alleges that the local chapter of a biker gang murdered her and hid her body in the walls of a historic theater, though there's no proof of her murder and the theater has since been heavily renovated. Fifteen years ago a woman was stabbed and strangled to death in the basement of her home and then the house was set on fire. A cable guy discovered the house burning in the middle of the day. The husband was cleared along with a number of other people. There are rumors that the local PD has DNA, but there hasn't been any new information. Oldsboro, North Carolina. What happened to the nuke that fell out of the bomber? Is my neighbor dead? My next door neighbor is an older lady with a bunch of adopted special needs children. Unfortunately a while back she was diagnosed with terminal colon cancer. Three nights ago there were a whole bunch of ambulances and cops at her house. I wasn't there, I was at fencing practice. For a few days her house was quiet, but then a car started coming in and out. She may be having the same client coming in for her massage clinic, or it's her kid's caretaker. None of us have any clue what happened. We also don't have the courage to go and ask her kids if she died. The disappearance of Kyron Horman. If you're anywhere in the Pacific Northwest I'm sure you've heard the name. He disappeared in 2010, and even though the stepmother was highly suspected no evidence was ever found. They still hold events, and I've seen a billboard or two around in recent years. Hopefully one day they find his remains and bring some closure to family. An old woman in her 80s with Alzheimer disappeared from her home in a small village near the bottom of a waterfall. Months went by, people looked everywhere for her. Nothing. Almost a year later, someone decided to go near the top of a waterfall, for that they had to leave the trail and climb down in the bushes. They stumble across a pair of shoes and then a skull. It was determined to be the old lady, but no one knows how on earth she arrived there or if someone helped. I think they couldn't events determine how she died. This was in 2020. In June 2010 a bunch of animals were killed injured at Happy Ralph's in St. Catharines. About half a dozen of the animals had been shot with pellet and BB guns and that four small animals had been killed. 
I have yet to hear any news if the people who did it were caught. I grew up going to the park for picnics, hide and seek in the failed forested area, and walks along the lake. In the summer the petting zoo was a treat. It was such a shock when it all happened. They still have some animals there to this day, but it looks like the enclosures are much more secure. Des Moines, Iowa. Most famously it's Johnny Gosh. Paperboy goes missing and still isn't found. More recently is Ashley Auckland. Realtor was killed while showing a house in 2011. Zero suspects. I think this case is pretty well known, there's even a movie about it, The Hinterkaifeck Murders. I live not far away from the place. Basically, in 1922 an unknown man killed a farmer, his entire family and the housemaid, a total of six people. He then stayed in the house for approximately three more days, fed the animals, and took care of the farm, with the bodies rotting away in the barn, which caused the killings to go unnoticed for a while. That's pretty much the hard facts. The rest is a mystery. There's no apparent motive, police investigations were sloppy, and important clues got lost. In 2007 there was a new investigation. The police claimed they were absolutely certain they found out who it was, but they still haven't disclosed it because living relatives of the murderer want to stay anonymous. We may never know. I've never actually been to the place myself. The farmhouse is long gone, it's just a field now. Also the locals try to discourage people from going there, they don't want tourists swarming the place. There's a sound sometimes at night. It's coming from the direction of the ocean and have reportedly been heard multiple kilometers away. It's a loud low hum rumble. The local municipality has set up a unit you can write to if you've heard the sound so they can try and figure out what it is. Because we have absolutely no idea. People around my village report seeing a man in a gas mask around the old coastal defenses, lots think it's a ghost or spirit. It's me. I'm gas mask man. Not my town, but one nearby. I live in a rural area and one year there was an incident where like six women disappeared in one day back in 2014. All of their bodies were found later on in separate places with gunshots and all that. Nobody knows who did it. There's even a documentary about it. The disappearance of Catherine Winters. She disappeared in 1904 and no one ever heard from her again and her body was never found. She was nine years old. Technically solved, but a lot of contention, Ben Smart and Olivia Hope in New Zealand two 18 years olds who went to a night party at a local lodge that is boat access only. They were seen getting on someone's yacht afterwards and not seen again. The police focused on and charged Scott Watson despite his yacht, nor matching the description at all. He was found guilty and has been in prison since, but there is a lot of evidence he didn't do it. Bodies have never been found. Alyssa Robertson went missing from my hometown of Aransas past Texas over 30 years ago. The case has never been solved. Maura Murray from Hanson, Massachusetts. She was in college at the time, she emailed her professors saying there was a death in her family and she would not be attending class, edit, forgot to mention there really was no death at all, confirmed with her family. They had no idea she was heading up to New Hampshire at the time. Drove up to New Hampshire in her beat-up car that she knew she shouldn't drive that far, and her car was found on the side of the road in a snowbank, and she's never been seen since. My mom was in her grade, and they played sports together and had many mutual friends. There are tons of podcasts and stuff on her case, and the FBI very recently started looking into it. A nearby reserve it's a native Canadian reserve it's where I grew up I have little folk tales that my parents told me, but back to the mystery. I remember my dad telling me that one night, thundering 11pm he was in the kitchen, and other people have seen heard the same stuff in the community. But my dad seen he decided to look out the window and saw a little one to two foot tall person or people running around as each lighting strikes moving fast around the yard just scoring doing stuff. And there is an island not too far away from the shore it's called Sugar Island and there is folktale about that's where the little people live nearby and in the winter when people would go ice fishing they seen little footprints going to that island people never found out if they were and no one ever dared to go to the island can only imagine that, chilling. Why money keeps appearing on my neighbor's property. Not just any money, but British pounds from the 1800s. I live in Australia and they are from the times where convicts came here. Oakland County Child Killer, Hoffa. Where I grew up, a Norwest bank was robbed during the armored car exchange. The armored car was blocked in and a bomb was put on the dash of the armored car. The robbers escaped in a van. Police eventually found the van burned out and tire tracks showing another getaway vehicle. No other crimes like that have happened in the area. Police were our stumped. 